about how to work the Creole stitch and we're going to do this with two colors working in the round. So I have cream and this lovely little aqua and I'm going to join my second color. Now I'm going to refer to these as color A and color B with the cream. And they're not really main color and contrast color because they're actually worked equally. So they'll just be color A and color B. All right, so I've just tied it on there and I'm just gonna pull that down. And to begin, what's really different about Creole Stitch is that you're always carrying your floats in the front. So it's really important to A, keep them consistent because that will affect the look of the woven fabric that we'll create. And B, to make sure that you are always crossing the two colors the same direction every time. And the reason for this is because it really affects the way the fabric looks. So let me show you what I mean by that. So we're gonna begin by bringing color A to the front, because this is our float, and color B is what we're going to begin knitting with. So we'll knit three stitches with color B. And then we're going to pass color A back to the back and bring color B to the front. Now notice color A, this darker blue color, is passed over color B, which is the cream. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that those always cross each other this exact same way every time. So if you were to cross it the other way, it would look like this. And color B would be on top, and that is not what we want. So always cross them the same direction. I cross them with color A over the top every time. Now, one of the things that's interesting about having floats in front is you're much more aware of them. So if you have a tendency to carry your floats really tightly when you do color work, this can kind of help break you of that habit because when you're actually looking at the floats, it really helps you start to ease up on your tension. And you do want them to have a little bit of, of um, flexibility there. You don't want them to be super tight. So going on, we're gonna knit three stitches with color A. And again, we're keeping that float in the front. All right, see what we've got going on here. Now we're gonna cross the yarns again. We're going to bring color A over the top and take color B to the back and color A to the front. I kind of hold on to the yarns to keep tension because it is a little more like holding your tension with color work. All right, we've done three, so we're going to cross that back to the back. So this is the first step, all right? You can see what we're creating here. We've got these little floats in the front and the color A, you can see how it sits over the top and color B sits along the bottom. And on the back, you can't see it yet, but the back creates its own little design as we go. So we're gonna continue in this fashion, bringing, oops, bringing color A to the front and color B to the back. And you might at first have a tendency to accidentally default to carrying your floats in the back like you might normally do with color work. That's okay, just go back and fix it and bring your float to the front. All right, bring that now to the back and bring the float to the front. So you should always have one strand at the back and one strand at the front. The one at the back is the one you're working with and the one at the front becomes the float that you're gonna catch later and see how those have relative looseness to them. This one right here actually looks like it might be a little bit too loose. It's a little bit longer than the others, but this gives you a pretty good idea of the tension that you're looking for. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this row and then we're gonna take a look at step two of working the Creole stitch. All right. I've worked the stitch all the way around. This is the foundation row. So I've created that first round of floats all the way around. And obviously the goal is to keep our floats nice and consistent. They don't have to be exact, but if you find that some are really tight and some are really loose, you're just gonna wanna practice trying to develop some consistency there. And it's all in how you hold the tension in your hand 
when you're carrying your yarn. Okay, so we're ready to start the second round and this is where we've finished this foundation round and now all of the other rounds are gonna look just like this. So we're gonna get really into a rhythm. So we're gonna bring color A back to the front like we did before and color B is to the back. And the way that you know which color should be at the back is we're gonna be knitting the same color that you see on your needle. So there's three cream colored stitches and the yarn at the back is the one that will be our working yarn. So we want color B at the back because that matches the stitches we'll be knitting. And remember the color in the front is the float and the floats should be the same color as the floats below them. So we're going to knit the first stitch and then here's the secret of Creole stitch is when you go to knit the second stitch, catch a float. Catch that float and knit it with the second stitch and then knit the third stitch like normal. Now we're gonna do the same thing we did on the foundation row. We're gonna do that little flip where we take color A to the back and color B to the front. And again, color A, that's, uh, that's represented in the next stitches on our needle. So that's how we know color A goes to the back. And we're gonna do the same thing we did before where we always cross with color A over the top. And then we're gonna knit a stitch, catch a float. We're catching the center stitch we're catching the float with the center stitch so that our little um, woven points are centered and then we will just knit the next stitch and then we will cross our yarns again always keeping color a crossed over color b so we knit the first stitch catch your float as you knit the second stitch knit the third stitch and kind of move this around as we go and then we Cross the yarns again and you'll develop a little bit more of a rhythm to this as you do it and as you find what's comfortable for your hands to hold and whether you pick or wrap you should be able to find a comfortable way to do this so now I'm just going to finish doing this all the way around again swapping those yarns. Now the first round or two, maybe even the first several rounds, you can't quite see the pattern develop yet. So it might seem like nothing is really happening, but if you keep doing it, once you get a few rounds under your belt, you will really start to see what's happening. So for right now, it looks like this. Kind of interesting, but you can't quite see the pattern that's happening yet but you will you will all right i'm going to finish this round and then i'm going to come back and we'll do the next one all right we are just now starting the third round so we did a foundation round and then we did a round of catching floats and now we're going to do another round of catching floats and we're going to actually keep repeating this process to create the Creole fabric. And it begins to really look sort of like a woven basket, which is what inspired the name, the Creole used to carry fish. And it's woven from wicker typically. So you'll really see that show up. Now you can do this with two skeins of the same color, but it does get a little trickier to pay attention to which color you're carrying where, which one is A and B. So doing it with multiple colors really does help. Now, as you keep going, you're doing the same thing over and over. So just be kind of watching and making sure that you're always using the working yarn in the right spot and that you're always crossing those yarns over each other in the same direction. So every single round, you are both catching a float and creating a new float. So there's never a slipped stitch. You're always knitting every single stitch creating floats and catching floats. So see, I'm catching a float, but also creating the float because as I carry that yarn, that becomes the float for the next round. And so you can kind of start to see a little bit of the pattern develop and you will just continue this around and around until your fabric is the length that it's meant to be. And that is how you do the basic creel stitch and there's really not much to it the only real potential issues are just if you carry your floats too loose or too tight 
or if you cross your yarns the wrong direction. But as long as you keep those two things going pretty smoothly, you will have a really beautiful fabric come together. And I'll show you what that looks like next. Okay, here is the creel stitch cowl. You can kind of see that almost like fishbone-like, somewhat even like a herringbone, but it's this woven look and it has some really nice stretch to it. This is what you're creating. So these center columns are where you're catching the floats and the floats as they cross over each other, that's what creates this really lovely fabric. And it has just a real texture of a weave to it has a really great feel and it lays nice and flat. So this would be really lovely on a sweater cuff or a cowl or possibly even as trim or detail on a sweater. The really fun part too is how interesting the inside is. So we can kind of turn this around. It's completely reversible and it has a really interesting look to it. Very different almost a, a unique and lovely design in and of itself, but very different from this woven design that we create on the right side. So that is your introduction to Creel Stitch. Mm -hmm.